Just look around and you will find the answer. The keys to my trailer. Now to find the clicker and the colt. I can't open this with my bare hands. There's your knife.
some creepy laughing for atmosphere? Another one of those lunch boxes. Welcome back, and boy, do we have some breaking news that's sure to knock your socks off. Davis family beef jerky will now be available at the Sunday market in three delicious flavors. That's right, our favorite sponsor, Davis family beef jerky, can now be enjoyed in smoked hickory, teriyaki, and hickory teriyaki. I handed out samples here at the Valhalla Nursing Home and thought I'd catch up with one of our residents to get her thoughts. Donna, how are you? I've got chronic back pain from my spinal stenosis. Oh, dear. You know, when I'm feeling stiff, I find a light snack helps. So, did you try that beef jerky? No. Lunch is at 11, and I wanted to save my appetite because today was the fish soup with crackers. You're allowed up to four crackers, but I only take one unless I have a glass of cranberry juice. They ran out of cranberry juice at breakfast, which is at 7. I didn't take the oatmeal today because it makes me gassy before cribbage, and I can't fo- So you didn't try the jerky. Got it. Well, that's too bad, Donna. Their new teriyaki flavor sure does hit the spot. They had teriyaki salmon with rice on Friday's dinner menu. Dinner's at 5, but we all know the salmon takes longer to prepare, and then you're late for bingo. And who needs all that spice? I heard. Teriyaki is a shit flavor. Who? Is that Tapio? How are you on the line? I couldn't end the call. You've been on the phone this entire time? Yes, and I hate teriyaki. Well, it's delicious on jerky. So, let's give a big thank you to Wendy Davis for these samples. Wendy? No, that can't be right. Wendy went missing in 2010. I heard she's dead. No, I'm, I'm referring to Wendy Davis from our sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky. Wendy Davis, that's the dead one. She's dead. Right. Well, that's our time. Remember to keep your coffee warm and your chin up because that sun shines right around the corner. <laughs> Pat Main, signing off. Right. Uh, well, that's our time. Sun shines right around the corner, so... I'll leave you with a sunny little ditty to carry you through the day. Pat Main signing off. Right, well, that's our time. We'll be right back after this next song by the rock and roll sensation, National Nightmare.
I need to find my way back. Another Alex Casey lunchbox? In one fluid motion, Saga cracked open the shotgun, sending the empty hulls flying over her shoulder, and slammed the new shells in faster than she had imagined possible.
Fluffy World is all smiles. to this. More of those rhymes. Need to find the key. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
another cult box. Think Saga. back with Pat Main, and we've got a very special guest today on the program. It's artisan cuckoo clock designer Terry Feldman. Terry, how are we today? Hey there, Pat. You're in just fine. I'm a super big fan of the show. What, uh, what a treat to be on with you today. Oh, <laughs> the pleasure's all mine, Terry. <laughs> now, I hear you're doing something special for Deerfest. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm crafting a selection of custom basswood cuckoo clocks, but the real special sauce is when it's cuckoo time and you're expecting a bird to pop out for a chirp. 
<laughs> Out comes a big old deer. Well, that's just neat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. Real neat. That's going to have the tourists tickled pink. And I hear you're selling these at the Sunday market. So make sure to say hello to Wendy Davis from our sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky, while you're there, all right? Terry, you, you, you still there? Yeah, yeah, still here. I'm just... Jeez, Pat, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this. I, I, I thought you heard Wendy's dead. Oh, boy. That's, that's a strange joke you're playing there, Terry. No, it's... I, I, I'm sorry, Pat. You, you know all that FBI business. Wendy was one of those bodies they found. Well, that's just not possible, Terry. Wendy stopped by this morning with three flavors of beef jerky. She brought me the, uh, the, the smoked hickory and the teriyaki and, and then... What was that other one? I'm, I'm real sorry, Pat. What was that other one? She was just talking about this just hours ago. Smoke hickory, teriyaki, and... Hickory teriyaki. Hickory teriyaki. Thanks, Tapio. It's, it's just a bit of a strange joke, Terry. Did Yako and Elmo put you up to this? Pat. Well, somebody's having a laugh over this little prank, I'm sure. Terry, thank you so much for your time. Can't wait to see those Deer Fest cuckoos at the market. Wendy will be there with her beef jerky as always, and, and we'll be back after this. The page said I'd run into a cultist here. On your toes, Saga.
like myself. Don't know how to fight it. We're too old. Excuse me. I'm looking for the Anderson trailer. Like we were just saying, it's not true. The lies to hurt you and make you weak. Don't believe a word. They believe because deep down, they want to be told what to think. We're different. Rebels! You must stop it before it turns real. Don't be part of the story. Make the story. <laughs> Stop the hell of it! <laughs> These old drunks don't seem affected by the horror story like the other locals are. Do they know what's happening here? How do you know about the story? Same as you, of course, sweetie pie. We are family. The Andersons. Vikings! Gods! So good to finally see you, Saga. I am your great uncle Odin, and this is your long lost Mordefar, Thor! Is your grandfather, and I am the old father. <laughs> Just as crazy as everyone else. Just as caught in it. I need to stay focused. I need to check out the trailer. You have things to do, sweetie pie. up my list of favorite park benches in Bright Falls. And now, I just want to clear something up from our last broadcast. There was some talk, an off-color joke of sorts, about Wendy Davis of Davis Family Beef Jerky being dead, which of course is a bunch of hogwash. So I'm gonna give our dear friend Wendy a call so we can put an end to these silly rumors and... Oh! It looks like we already have her on the phone line. <laughs> Wendy, hello. Hi there, Pat. Ah, uh, that, that's, that's not Wendy. No, this is Jim Figamore. Remember, we were going to do the announcement today. Oh, is that, was that today? Listeners, we have Jim Figamore with us and the director of the Bright Falls Community Theater. And, and I'm here to announce that the theater will be losing one of its most dignified thespians as I, Jim Figamore, will be running for mayor! <laughs> Hold for applause. Well, that's uh, quite a, an announcement, Jim. Just let me find my notes here. I have some questions written down for you. The real question is what happened to this town. 
Sprite Falls used to draw in thousands of tourists with its vibrant art scene and impressive bird feeders. And what's our reputation now? Haunted Bright Falls, spooky Bright Falls. The world is laughing at us. And now all this business with the FBI? We need a mayor who can turn this town's reputation around. And nobody knows more about the role of mayor than I do. I played one in the theatrical production of Fiorello to glowing reviews by Coffee World magazine. Mayor Setter is a joke. And you know what? I hear he kills cats. There. I see. Now, Jim, this is a family show. Ah, I found my notes here. So, so why don't we pivot to some questions? First question. What exactly goes into that delicious beef jerky? Uh, right. So it looks like these are my questions for Wendy Davis of Davis Family Beef Jerky. <laughs> the only jerk I care about is Mayor Setter. Our future's at stake. Pets are being murdered. And it's time for a change. Jim Figamore for mayor. That concludes our program today. Oh, I, I actually had more to... Jim Figamore and Pat Main signing off. And we've got a great tune here to play us out. Take it away, Pat. Who is this incredibly attractive martial arts master? It's me, your brother, Ilmo. I now recognize you, but Ilmo, why are you dressed like that? Deerfest is almost here, which means we're <laughs> chopping the prices on all of our custom-designed Deerfest parade floats. Floats created by the award-winning team at Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club, winners of last year's trophy for best Deerfest float featuring an animal that is not deer, that very team. And you're gonna get a kick <laughs> out of our latest float designs. <laughs> We've done it all. Deerfest floats, restaurant floats, floats shaped like things we can't show on television. Our floats are the best way to impress your friends, propose to your partner, or throw shade at an office colleague. And we don't do just Deerfest. Our floats are a perfect gift for weddings, birthdays, or mitzvahs, or your gonna Cinaria. Our floats will punch up any special occasion. <laughs> but why take our word for it? Let's hear it from one of our many, many happy customers. I was at Deerfest last year. The floats were pretty good. One of them was a swan. And that was the people liked it. And there you have it. Award-winning floats now at reduced prices that will Knock you off your feet! Are 
yours today. Hello, Yako. Who is this in... Such a shame. Your name is Anderson? Same as you, kiddo. Tor Anderson? Odin Anderson? The old guards of Asgard? That's our band. Yours. You are Saga Anderson, goddammit. A Viking goddess. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Tor. Odin. Saga. All Norse-inspired, plus the same last name. A coincidence? Did the horror story change their names to match mine? So, do you know where the Anderson trailer is? Right behind us. We've been looking after it since you left. Uh-huh. Thanks for your help. Anytime, kiddo. It looks like you two have had a bit too much fun. She sees right through us, bro. She has the power. This calls for a fucking celebration. Our little saga all grown up and finally home. Sure, we've had a few sips. Just a taste. The famous Anderson moonshine. Oh, the nectar of the gods. You want some? No, thanks. Have you seen any strange people in deer masks? I haven't drunk enough for that yet. You can see all sorts of wonderful things when you make your way down the bottle. Even more so with just one eye. Okay. Never mind. Reeks of booze. Hero's tango is uplifting. Music for the soul. Everything here reminds me of Logan. This could be her room. This is getting too real, too personal.
my newfound relatives. Cozy with the cult of the tree. And that's the clicker. In the hands of the cult, just like the page promised. Carlyvala Knights. That's the motorcycle club the Coskella brothers are in. I'll take Odin and Tor up on their offer and visit their nursing home. Right after I find this biker workshop. That's it.
No. Logan's not dead. Some real things are mixed in with the fiction. Doesn't matter. It's not real. It's not. <clears throat> but your double edited it into a horror story that's now changing reality, taking over people.
The photo proved the cult had the clicker. Thor and Odin were in it too. Worth following up on later. Locked. They must be in there. There has to be a way to get this lock open. Hey, stop right there. The shape stumbled out of the dark toward Deputy Mulligan. Thornton was doubled over, coughing. A chunk of cold pastrami caught in his throat. Bring it, fucker. Mulligan fired. Thornton hacked the pastrami out of his windpipe, opened fire with his partner. The monster fell. They kept shooting. The thrill of domination. This was the cult of the tree. Not one tree. A forest. Secret knowledge in a deer mask. A last line of defense. yippee ki motherfucker. Bright Falls fucking finest. They crept over. Pulling out their flashlights. The horror. This is Monica from the tackle shop. An innocent woman. Thornton's pastrami came back up. This is the cult hideout. Their headquarters, even? There's a basement. Use. I can use this to get the Espresso Express working. The Nightingale ritual wasn't completed.
The cult isn't well organized. People aren't following orders. The cult is leaving supplies around for themselves. This will be handy. This is the cult's process. Their ritual. That's not right. Hmm. <clears throat> 
killing of Monica Thompson was a terrible mistake. Thornton blamed Mulligan's itchy trigger finger. Mulligan blamed Thornton's shitty pastrami sandwich. They only agreed it wasn't their fault. No one will find her corpse. We'll hide it. They fed the body to the maw of a crumbling well, like the murderous Huatari brothers did long ago. They lied to everyone. The word would never get out. But a secret like this doesn't die. It grew inside them, like cancer. The darkness taking over, filling the shape of them. <laughs> A little something to get those arms moving. Mm -hmm. 
a creepy basement. There was another overlap here in Watery. The parade float was the key. Mulligan and Thornton had gone there, taken the clicker, left this monster here to stop her. There's an overlap here, like there was at Cauldron Lake. Mulligan and Thornton alight Nightingale. Inside, waiting. And a parade float is the key. The clicker was there the whole time. Fucking Mulligan and Thornton. Saga had read about it. The trap. She knew what was waiting for her. The moment she saw the giant, she knew she wasn't ready. You let Logan drown. The weapon it carried could crack her skull like a brittle egg. Brains leaking out like yolk. Everything she loved, lost. Everything she was, lost. We will watch it eat your mind. Reading this made her sick. But the fear was sharp when she faced it. There was another overlap here in Watery. The parade float was the key. Mulligan and Thornton had gone there, taken the clicker with them, left this monster here to stop her. Mulligan and Thornton were fine earlier. How did this happen? A terrible mistake. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Shadows on their faces, filling the shape of them. Bright Falls fucking finest. Shitty pastrami sandwich. Mulligan and Thornton became like Nightingale. Mulligan and Thornton are members of the cult. Who's the leader? Brains leaking out like ilk. The thrill of domination. Not one tree. A forest. The word. A secret like this doesn't die. There is more than one leader. They took the clicker into the overlap. How do I get it back? A Taken is upstairs. This was a trap.
Where's that parade float? formed around Watery's dark past. The ritual to enter was tied to crafting the float. Art was the key. It had the power to let Saga in. At Cauldron Lake, giving the poem and the heart to the witch sign, opened the overlap. Here, it's a parade float. But it's incomplete. So this is the Coscula Brothers parade float. Looks like only four pieces are missing. The mask is the only one without a location listed. Hmm. Gift shop. Easy. Espresso Express. Got it. I can't make out what it says. Fair trade fun zone. Is this the parade float the page mentioned? This is one disturbing parade. How come one of them is wearing a mask and the other isn't? I already took care of all this. The float killer isn't wearing a mask. Maybe he needs one. The materials listed for the parade float mention a mask. Where is it? Poor Mocha Moose. He never felt to amuse me. No, we know, Ilmo. There is such a thing as too much coffee. Mocha will live on in a place of honor. He lost his head. Mulligan and Thornton had one job. Mulligan and Thornton must know where the Moose Skull mask is. Ilmo stood in front of the parade float, turned dramatically to his crew. Now, imagine the murderer's arms moving. Stab, 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 and then Naki laughing. Everyone at Deerfest always plays it safe, not us. This monument to Watery's history, this work of art will sweep this year's awards. The overlap formed around Watery's dark past. The ritual to enter was tied to crafting the float. Art was the key. It had the power to let Saga in.
What's missing from the parade float? I need to put it together. The mask is missing. Where is it? The dead brought back to life. The crown of the Grand Master. No stink is never a mistake. Just get it fucking done! They know where it is. I know they know. Where is the mask? I am bleaching. We all bow to him. The mark of the crumbling will. Show the bitch who's mark! Mask is at the Huatari Well in Coffee World. I saw something. Like I did in Cauldron Lake. The well here in Coffee World. I know the Moose Skull will be there. It's here. I knew it would be. I made them show me. Now I need to bring the mask to the float. <laughs> and finally, the moose skull. Mulligan and Thornton in the wreckage of the morgue. Shadows on their faces. Thornton did his best woman's voice. I'm a stuck-up FBI bitch. I'll make a big fucking mess and get these dumb backwater cops to clean it up. Thornton turned to his partner. These government motherfuckers. Next time, Mulligan, I'll tell her. You got no clue. You let your own kid drown. You're a fucking fraud. Mulligan leered. Pinning the murder on the bookers would have fixed this whole goddamn mess. But their kind always sticks together. I reckon we should show the bitch who's boss, Thornton. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Inside them, they grinned.
The story is trying to take Logan. I can still stop this. I need the clicker. Anderson, the trick. He has it now. Wake? I saw him this way in the other overlap. <clears throat> it's a loop. Just like before. Skella stood in front of the small gathering of Coffee World employees and bikers. He read from a piece of paper. Mocha was a wonderful moose who deserves a place of honor in the Hall of the Calavella Knights. His skull will become the crown of the Grand Master. The dead brought back to life. There was polite applause. After the service, Ilmo had the body hauled off to be turned into moose steaks. Mulligan and Thornton were told to get the head cleaned. They both grabbed an antler. What the hell, Thornton? I got it, Mulligan. They brought the skull into the workshop to boil it and bleach it. They grumbled. Wanted to just get it fucking done. It was just a stupid animal. But I guess moose steak is never a mistake, huh? get through that. I need to look for another way through.
going down. What does that mean? 